Hey guys, my name is Avigat and in this video, I'll be talking about the switch statement in Java. So before I start, I'll just explain to you what a switch statement even is. So a switch statement is similar to an if else condition. However, people use the switch cases only because it's a lot more cleaner and a little more systematic. However, if conditions are still used because they're a lot easier as compared to switch cases since switch statements have a slightly different syntax in Java as compared to if and else conditions. Having said this, switch statements aren't really that difficult to understand. To explain switch statements, I will begin by giving you an example of a program. So I'll be writing a program to accept a number and print the character day. So in this program, what I'll be doing is, so first I'll store a value in an integer and then I will use that number to find out what day it belongs to. So for example, day one would equal to Monday, day two will equal to Tuesday, day three is equal to Wednesday and so on up till day seven, which is Sunday. So based on the number of the day, the program will find out what day it even is. So before I write the code using switch statements, I will just write the same code using if and else condition. So you will understand the difference between the two. So first I will begin by creating an integer variable and I'll say days and I'll give this a value of six. Six is equal to Saturday and uh, we'll test that out in the code. So I'll say if days double equal to one curly brackets and here I'll write the print statement and here I'll say Monday. Now I'll just copy this and I'll add an else over here. So else if days double equal to two, this will be Tuesday. Just copy this once more and I'll repeat the process over here. Okay, so here I've added all the else if conditions for the respective days up till day seven. And now I'll just add else over here. And if the value of days is none of these seven numbers, I will just print out error because then it won't have a value in the week. Okay, so this is basically the program using if and else conditions. However, you can see that it's a little long, it's a little lengthy and it can get a little confusing at times when the if conditions are greater in number. So I will just delete this and I'll write the same code now using switch statements. So declaring the variable is the same. I'll just say int days is equal to whatever value and the first thing I'm going to do is use the switch keyword. So I'll say switch and within the brackets, I will provide the name of the expression. So in this case, the name of the variable is days. So I'll just say days and here I'll write the curly brackets. Now inside this, I will start writing my switch cases. So, so when we write if and else conditions, all we have to do is write if then the statement else if then the statement else if then the statement and so on however in switch we need to write multiple cases so case one case two three four five etc so first i'll write case one so case one which is the first integer case one colon and here i'll say the print statement so system dot out dot print ln and if the case is one then i'll say monday so now after writing case and the print statement i have to write break which indicates that this case is over and I can move on to the next case. So I'll just copy this, paste it here. So case two this time. So over here, I'll just replace Monday with Tuesday. Again, break. Now I'll say case three, Wednesday. And I'll just repeat the process until case seven. Okay, so as you can see over here, I've repeated the same structure until day seven, which is Sunday. Um, so basically all these cases act like if conditions. So case one over here basically means if days, which is the expression, if days is equal to one, then it will print out whatever is there within case one. So it will print out Monday. If case is equal to two, so if the value of days is equal to two, then it will print out Tuesday. If the value of days is equal to three, it will print out Wednesday and so on. However, the value of days in this case is six. So it will come all the way down till six statements. And what this break does over here is it ends the switch statement and moves it back to the next part of the code, whatever is there after the switch. So there's nothing there in this particular program. But if you're writing a lengthier, uh, bigger code, then obviously there might be certain things after the switch. So this break indicates that um, the switch is ended. So these basically act as the if and else conditions in the switch statements. 
However, in the if and else conditions, you also have the else statement. And to write the else statement in the switch statements, we we'll have to write default. Okay, so default is another keyword which is important in the switch statements. So default, which is basically the same as else. So print error. And here I'll again say break. Okay, so this means that the code is over. I'll just compile it and let's check the output. So the output should be Saturday, uh, void main here. It shows that it's Saturday because days is equal to six. Although this program is over, I'll just give you a demonstration of how this default works. So instead of days six, I will say days is equal to 10. So over here, there isn't any case for days is equal to 10. Um, so I'll just compile this. It, it should show me error. Let's check it out. So void main here, it shows me that it's an error. Now I've showed you how we can use switch cases when the value is in the form of an integer. However, you can also use switch statements when the value is a string. So I'll just give you a small example of that. So I'll just clear all of this and let's say I'll create a string variable car and here I'll give it a value. Let's say Honda. Now let's start writing the switch statement. So switch and here I'll write the name of the variable. So car curly braces and I'll write my case one here. So my first case over here is let's say BMW. Okay. So if the case is BMW, I will give a colon and I'll print out car is a BMW. Okay. Now I'll add my break and I'll copy this and now I'll write my next case. So my second case, let's say the car is a Mercedes. So car is a Mercedes. Now again, break. And lastly, over here, let me write case Honda car is a Honda. Okay, break. Now that these cases are done, let me just write my default. And here I will say error, which means that the value of car is not present within these cases. So over here, now it should show me that car is Honda because uh, it fits in this case. Let's compile this and check the output void main here. It shows me that car is Honda. Now let me change this to Toyota, which is not present within any of these cases. So it should print out error compile again void main here. It shows me that it's an error. So yeah, that is all. If you want the codes to my previous videos, they will all be present on my website, avigatgupta.com. And so will this video be linked over there. So you can check it out if you want to. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to answer them as soon as possible. That is all for this video guys. I hope you learned something new and if you did, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and see you later. Bye.